Welcome to How Small Business Moves Forward as we lead together in these unpredictable times. And uh, this is a conversation I've been looking forward to because it happens from somebody outside the business community but cares very much about how business is being impacted in his town. Uh, Mayor Fraser told me joining us from Canada's most notorious city, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And uh, Fraser, uh, let's start right away. What do you see in, in terms of the community. Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan uh, achieved national, in fact, global recognition a year ago as being a, a, a real happening spot. But uh, see if you can't uh, just bring us all up to speed on, on what's happening from, a, from an economic point of view right now in Moose Jaw. Well, obviously, there's a, a great deal of uncertainty. And so, uh, you know, the number one thing is, is you have to recognize that and, and understand it. You know, I Gary, I go back to my old flying days uh, when you didn't have an airplane engine. You know, uh, one of the things that you used to do when we were doing pilot training was you pull the engine. Well, the airplane becomes a glider. And so you have to use the assets that you have available to you uh, in order to, to, to have a, a soft landing, you know, find a landing place. So, you know, uh, we have been, you know, working with the business community the, the last couple of years to come together to uh, help modernize and to help brand our community uh, because, you know, tourism is a big thing in our community and, and, uh, and setting yourself apart from other communities so that people want to come and visit you. Um, in that process, we've been talking to businesses about being able to adapt uh, because you have big online presence with Amazon and uh, other uh, stores. Uh, and so as a smaller business, how can you compete in that environment? And uh, we've been talking about, you know, not only branding, but also adapting and becoming digital and having an online presence as well. And you're seeing, you were telling me before we went on, uh, you're seeing some great examples already of small businesses, medium-sized businesses in your community really rallying and, and trying to figure out ways to pivot, adapt, and metaphorically turn their business into the glider. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, you know, uh, right now, obviously, with my role as it is, uh, as the mayor, I'm, you know, I'm here on a daily basis and I'm working with... Um, uh, you know, administration or supporting administration in the capacity that I can, but communicating with other mayors within our province, uh, because I'm chair of the city mayor's caucus in Saskatchewan, but also communicating with the province daily. This, this issue that we're dealing with, and I just, before I move on and start talking about the businesses, is a, is a health situation. And so, you know, as a municipality, we are creatures of the province. And so, uh, you know, we are kind of making sure that we're in step with the uh, Saskatchewan Health uh, in order to, um, uh, you know, provide information to our community. Now, going back to your point about business, uh, you know, what I've seen in businesses recently is, uh, you know, I think about Gemmel Shoes downtown. I, I always buy my shoes there. Um, and uh, they're providing, you know, delivery service. They're saying, okay, they're going to do free uh, fittings online, and uh, whether they have to order the shoes in, uh, but they're willing to do e-transfers for the transactions and getting the shoes out to their clients in this time. Uh, a coffee shop just uh, across from City Hall here, Evolve, is actually doing a delivery service for people that, uh, you know, like myself, that's in the office and, and you know, you want a cup of coffee and they're going to, you know, do some treats and snacks and, you know, a minimum of ten or $10 per order and, and they'll come out and, and, and drop things off. Uh, you know, I think about a uh, mutual friend that we have, um, uh, Charles Vandenbrock and, and uh, uh, the GM dealership. Now, that is a, an essential service for people to get their vehicles uh, working. Um, but in order to protect the clients, they're doing drop offs and, uh, you know, um, you know, making sure that their clients are looked after in this process. So it's, it's great. It's great to see businesses doing that. It's encouraging. You know, and uh, you know, Frazier, you know, and I know that, that, that there's different sectors of our entire economy that are, are, that are very vulnerable at this time. And small business would certainly rank among the very top of, of, of that, which is vulnerable. But 
This is a time, as you and I have discussed, this is a time for leaders to step forward. Love to hear your thoughts, but anything you can share, uh, because you're very networked in, in many ways that to me, Moose Jaw is kind of a microcosm of small town Canada. So right. love to hear your thoughts on, on, on what business leaders need to be thinking about right now from your perspective. Well, you know, I, I, from my perspective, I mean, it's very unique because uh, government intersects with, with business. And I've always been uh, an advocate for free enterprise. You know, I believe that, uh, you know, that's, that's part of our economy. That's how the Canadian uh, system works very well. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, that we have to go from being a victim mentality to a, uh, we need to rally here. And we need, this is a survival thing. And this is survival for small businesses. Uh, they need to figure a way to get to their clientele. They need to get to their customers. And it's going to be going that extra mile to provide that service, as we have talked about, that is going to um, keep them going, right? Because that's what, that's what you know, you and I want in this world. We want uh, exceptional service. Well, that's changed in how we're going to be receiving that and, and how we can be receiving it is that personal touch of dropping off a, uh, a box of shoes at, at the front door and doing an e-transfer um, or, you know, having the cup of coffee, you know, delivered to you or, um, you know, your car's ready and we're going to pick you up and you're going to be in a safe, secure environment uh, because we care about you. And that's important that that caring aspect from business owners to their clientele. And, you know, I, I say this cautiously, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I know that our local business owners um, uh, stress is that, that they care about the people they serve. And so you're going to see this in a different way in the service that they provide. And so that's important. That's very important. You know, Frazier, I'm just listening to you here and I, I can't help but think through some of the things that you're saying and how they translate to, if I understand you correctly, I'm hearing now more than ever, business, whether it's in Moose Jaw, across Canada, around the world, you've got to be notoriously kind, notoriously caring, and notoriously willing uh, to go the extra mile. I'd like to know uh, from your perspective, as a leader, how has this situation uh, been, you know, been testing you as a leader? What have you learned already, let's say, over the last couple of weeks? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the things you have to do is you have to be very brutally honest and say, okay, uh, we've never experienced something like this before, okay? But uh, instead of worrying about the the things that we can't control let's focus on the things that we can and and we have to really dig deep into our inner soul you know i truly believe this is a time for the city of moose jaw to rally i really believe this is a time for the province of saskatchewan to rally i, I believe that the canadian people are going to be united and this this is a time for us to be united. Um, and, and it seems counterintuitive, Gare, because, you know, we, we always do best when we're together. We do, we love to go to church together and worship together. We love to go to concerts together. We love to go to hockey games together, you know, and, and that's where we rally. You think about the 2014 Sochi uh, uh, women's hockey final where the Canadians come back from a two nothing uh, deficit and, and, and score, you know, Poulin scores that overtime goal, you know, that's the Canadian spirit. And, 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 and you think about the 2009, uh, juniors when on the new year's Eve game, we're down three, nothing. We come back to scare scores, all these goals, you know, gets a hat trick. We rally. That is the true nature and spirit of the Canadian people. And I really see that we can overcome. And, and I really think Gary, if I can be, you know, on this pedestal, just for another couple seconds here, that truly, if we make right decisions right now in Canada, 
we could be an economic and global superpower uh, in the future because we are the bread basket to the world. And, uh, and that is very important. And that's the beauty of my community is we, are, we, we were built based on farming. Mm. And, and, and that is how pe people came together in this community and, and getting product out overseas or across Canada. And that's, people have got to eat. So, you know, uh, I really see some good things in the future. This is going to be a blip, but we really can play this uh, uh, and, and come out on, on the other side winners. You know, just listening to you speak, Frazier, and talking about the times that Canadians have been together, I think of Paul Henderson scoring that goal in the 72 Summit Series. I, I, I think of, you know, Sidney Crosby's goal at the Olympics. I, I think of these moments of Canadian history, and I can't help it. As, and as I look at the photograph behind you, and, and knowing your own background with the military, I, I can't help but think of the spirit of of World War II. Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan was a training base for the RCAF. And, yeah. and, and are you drawing, I'm just curious, are you drawing any inspiration from that which is historical, the stirring speeches of uh, Winston Churchill in, in the dark days of May 1940, Franklin Roosevelt uh, at the height of the Great Depression? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious to know what's going through your mind right now. Well, yeah, and you know that, that that's my historical background, right? And uh, I had a degree in war studies where I studied over at King's College University of London in, in England. And, um, you know, my grandmother used to share stories of World War II and uh, what she experienced because uh, my family's from Scotland and uh, Glasgow and Glasgow was getting bombed. And, and uh, you know, we've always got through it. And that's where some of our best stories come from is digging down deep and uh, really uh, testing the true uh, character of the, of, of the human spirit. And, uh, you know, the human race is going to survive this. We are going to get through this, and uh, we are going to rally. And, and again, I say this, we, we do it better when we're together, so it seems counterintuitive to say we're going to isolate, but we're doing it to... Um, to protect those that are most vulnerable in, in our society. And so that is honoring those that have gone before us who have gone through things like this. And so I think it's really important to have a full understanding of the culture we live in, full understanding of who the Canadian people are uh, and what really unites us. Because for so many months now, we've talked about what divides us. And, uh, and uh, you know, I just, I think we are so much better when we are together as one nation. Yeah, I, I, I just love hearing that, Frazier, because I know that we've known each other for a little while, and we saw a glimpse of it when the country rallied behind Moose Jaw over the social media Cold War with Norway over who had the biggest mm -hmm. moose statue. And, and while that wasn't great fun, and it was all tongue in cheek and in fun, now it's when the chips are down and and I love your idea that Moose Jaw might be able to serve as like I said this bit of a microcosm of what's happening in Moose Jaw Frazier and I'll give you the final word is happening like right across the country yeah and and you know I think um, you know I know you have a big focus on leadership but I, I think leadership uh, should be uh, recognized as service and that's what we have to do as municipal, provincial, and federal leaders is serve those within our communities, our province, and our nation. Uh, before we go, one item of note, because we also know that no matter how serious the situation is, we have to balance with a little bit of fun. What, what's, um, what's his... I'm always what's up the, for that, Gary. What's that? I said, I'm always up for that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't help but be curious, what's his worship, the mayor of Moose Jaw, doing to, to maintain a sense of fun and sanity? Uh, you know, uh, I'm, geez, I, you know what, I, 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 that, that's a really hard question to answer because, uh, you know, it's, it all comes from here, Gare. I, you know, I just, I find, uh, it, you know, I, I have to say this, I've got a very dark sense of humor. So in, in very dark times, I find there's, there's lots of things to, to, to make fun of and, and, and laugh at. 
and so I got to be very careful of what I share, right? You know, and uh, so is, there a, is there a dark like Larry David side to praise yeah. you told me we don't oh, know yeah. about yet? Yeah, 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 there is. I mean, there's just you know, uh, and and I just yeah, and it's just the British sense of humor that I have. You know, I mean, you've got some Scottish well, heritage. I can't help here. But notice here, here's what I can't help but notice. I'm dying to ask you this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't help but notice when the rebrand of the city yeah. of Moose Jaw happened and you became Canada's most notorious city. Then when it went to the visual makeover, I couldn't help but notice the sheer coincidence of the black and gold color scheme that, and I don't know if this is starting a political scandal or not, but isn't it true, your worship, that you are Moose Jaw's number one fan of the Boston Bruins and the black and gold is somehow replicated in your new city colors? Yeah, I uh, so number one, I'd like to uh, I'd like to say that I had no part in choosing the colors. Uh, it was our community because, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so proud of my community. Uh, yes, yes. What they did, look at they they. But also, I, I you know what makes me happy is truly, yeah, it, it does go with my Boston Bruins. Uh, and you know, uh, I will say this, I I am. A, a fan of the perfection line. I'm a fan of Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, and David Pasternak. Love those guys. Uh, but truly, um, uh, it's also representative of our Special Olympics uh, region. Our colors are yellow and black, and so I think it really fits well with our community, and it matches my eyes. Yes. Well, uh, you know, and my I eyes are I green. Here. My eyes are green. <laughs> Frazier, I'm okay with it because I do have this black and gold sentiment towards the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think somewhere you and I can meet in the middle on, yeah. on, on the value of a strong black and gold color and the value of staying together, leading together. Yeah. Th Frazier, thanks so much for doing this and continued, uh, you know, good, keep up the good work out there in Moose Jaw. Thanks. And, and uh, to all your followers, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, sit in on this. And uh, you know what, I just want to say, stay strong. I just had a little conversation with my seven-year-old daughter uh, the other day, and as I was leaving, she asked, why was I going to work? And I said, honey, uh, I've got to go and serve the people. And she goes, well, I'm a little bit scared. And I asked her, you know what, you need to be strong so that we can be strong for our community and we can be strong for each other. So I'm asking everybody to be strong for each other. Uh, we're going to get through this, and, uh, and there's happy days on the way.